Hi everyone, my name is Natalia Castillejo and I am a group product manager at Duolingo, where I oversee the development of our language learning features. Recently, Duolingo has been focused on integrating AI into our app, and I'm very excited to share with you today some of the lessons that we've learned while building products with generative AI. For those of you who may not be familiar with Duolingo, we are the world's most popular language learning platform and the most downloaded education app in the world. Our mission is to develop the best education in the world and make it universally available. Our app offers free bite-sized lessons that help you learn, but feel like a game. As I mentioned a second ago, Duolingo has been focused on integrating generative AI into our product development process. And as you're probably aware of, generative AI refers to the artificial intelligence systems that learn from data to generate new text, new images, or other media in response to prompts. Here's an example of how I used generative AI to create an, the image on the right. All I had to do was to submit a prompt asking the AI to generate a picture of a green owl reading a book on the beach, and the AI did just that. It really is pretty amazing what generative AI can do, and the models just keep getting better and better over time. I hope that the examples that I will share with you today about how we've been using generative AI at Duolingo can inspire and guide you as you look to integrate technology, this technology into your own work. One of the first things that we learned when integrating generative AI into our product is that it can be very easy to get so wrapped up into the, in the tools capabilities that you lose track of the problem that you're trying to solve. But we have found that taking a step back and thinking about the specific user problems that we're trying to solve helped us create a more focused, valuable experience for our learners. For example, last year, Duolingo got early access to GPT-4 a language model that enables anyone to have a realistic conversation in almost any language with a very knowledgeable chatbot. We could ask it to explain a grammar concept or ask it to translate a sentence to a different language, and it would do a pretty good job at it. Naturally, one idea that we discussed was integrating this language model into the app in the form of a language tutor. Learners would be able to ask it any language question that they wanted, or ask how to say a particular expression in a different language. But we soon realized that we had fallen into the trap of focusing too much on the technology and what it could do, instead of the problem that we're trying to solve. There were a few issues with the idea of an AI tutor. First, anyone could build a simple tutor chatbot with ChatGPT, so our product wouldn't be very differentiated. In fact, you can go to ChatGPT right now and ask questions like, how do you say this in Spanish? Or explain this grammar concept to me. Second, we had learned from previous experiments that giving users too much choice, such as in the form of a freeform tutoring experience, often resulted in them feeling overwhelmed with options and not knowing where to start. In fact, learning research shows that people who learn a language are usually not so great at knowing what the most optimal thing to learn next is. Indeed, most of our learners are used to coming to Duolingo to tell them what they should focus on next, not the other way around. That's how we realized that an open-ended AI tutor would not be the way to go, even if GPT-4 allowed us to make that happen. So we went back to the drawing board and we asked ourselves, what user problems had we always wanted to solve but had never attempted because of scalability concerns. This way of framing the problem drove the focus away from what generative AI could do and refocused it on the user problem to be solved. It helped us to, uh, to think of generative AI as a means to an end and not as the end in itself. While we didn't think that an open-ended AI tutor would work, we did know that learners craved explicit and personalized explanations on the mistakes that they would make on Duolingo lessons. That's why one of our teams started to develop our Explain My Answer feature, which analyzes the mistakes that you make on Duolingo lessons and then gives you a report on what you got wrong. 
For example, if you translated a sentence incorrectly, you would get the option to see a detailed explanation of your mistake. Your AI tutor would tell you that in French, adjectives like dernier come before the noun and not after it. We tried this feature and rolled it out to real learners and people loved it. By providing personalized feedback within our regular Duolingo lessons at the exact moment that a question about language learning came up, we both ended up solving a real user need and maximized learning value. So to sum up, we learned that it's important to not get too wrapped up in the technology and always start with the user problem that you're trying to solve in order to deliver real value to our learners. Lesson number two has been to bet on technology. Generative AI is evolving very quickly. These last few months, as we applied generative AI to our products, we learned the importance of not making assumptions about what AI can or cannot do. Instead, we really pushed ourselves to bet on technology and assume that it would just keep getting better and better over time. Earlier this year, one of our teams started to develop a new feature to teach long-form listening skills. The goal was to create a shorter version of our podcast and put it in the app. The lessons, like our podcast, would feature fascinating stories in the language that you're learning, but at a level that you could understand. We also wanted the stories to feature the voices of our Duolingo cast of characters to make the audio experience blend seamlessly into the rest of the app. Historically, the team working on this project had done an amazing job writing and producing our Duolingo stories by hand. When they started taking a first pass at creating these audio stories using generative AI, things didn't work out so well. There was usually no humor in the stories generated by the language model, or when there were jokes, they wouldn't quite land. Also, the unique personality of our characters was not really coming through in the scripts. Overall, the quality of the storytelling suffered and it was clear that it was way worse than what we could achieve by going back to our original ways for content creation. When confronted with these issues, the team did not really want to pursue generative AI anymore. They thought that the tools just were not good enough. If we wanted to maintain the high quality bar that we had established, they felt that they had to keep producing the content almost entirely by hand. But instead of moving forward with our old approach, we knew that scalability in these listening lessons would be key to make this feature happen and to make it a success. At Duolingo, we have over 100 courses and audio production can be very time consuming. It just would be very hard or take way too long to provide the quantity of the content that we needed with, without some level of automation. In coming to terms with this realization, we decided to have our team double down on their generative AI efforts with the assumption that generative AI will just keep getting better and better. We soon learned that committing to this approach allowed the team to improve their skills in both researching and using these generative AI tools. They ended up researching and getting access to better and better AI tools that we had no idea existed, such as tools to generate very realistic voices for our characters. They also learned how to craft more effective prompts for content creation. For example, Writers would include examples of stories that they would write themselves in the prompts in order to generate the exact type of story that they were looking for. They also learned that including the descriptions of the characters, personalities into the prompt made the characters' lines feel a lot more cohesive with the rest of the app. Over time, the team got so good at this that they are now able to automate the creation of stories in a way that met and or exceeded our quality bar for putting it in the app. Betting on AI was a risk that we decided to take. Over these last few months, we could have gone down a path that would have allowed us to create delightful content that we could have put in the app, but that would not have allowed us to produce content at the scale that we really needed. 
This experience taught us the value of revisiting our assumptions and betting on technology to create scalable, delightful features for our learners. Lesson number three is to be responsible. Building products with generative AI inherently comes with a certain degree of risk. For example, the AI can generate misinformation or inaccurate responses. Users can also misuse or exploit the AI as they interact with it, such as by asking a chatbot in inappropriate questions. Finally, there can be bias in generated content. It is important that you keep these types of risks in mind as you think of integrating AI into your own product. And I'm gonna share with you a few examples of how Duolingo limited these risks associated with the technology. First, we carefully curated prompts. For example, instead of solely relying on generative AI to explain user mistakes, we would prime the AI with information that we already had about the learner's mistake, and this helped the model come up with way more accurate explanations. Another approach is to limit the ways that the user can interact with the AI, so that users won't get too tempted to take the AI down a path that we do not want. For example, in the Explain My Answer feature, the team decided to only let the learner respond by tapping on one of three options. Yes, and I understand, meaning finish the interaction. See an example. Can, can I see an example? Or no, can you elaborate? Instead of feeling limiting, these options were just another way of not overwhelming the user with too much choice. We felt that this was a win-win for both responsibility and UX. Allowing users to provide feedback on the AI is yet another way of uh, identifying whether something is going wrong. Finally, having a human in the loop throughout the content generation process can help ensure that content is safe, accurate, and unbiased. So in conclusion, generative AI will continue to evolve and improve in ways that we probably can't even imagine. By keeping these three lessons in mind, Duolingo has learned how to be more successful when integrating AI into the product development process. First, we learned the importance of starting with the user problem. Second, we were committed to betting on technology. And third, we were careful to be responsible with AI. I hope you found these lessons useful and uh, helpful as you work on integrating AI into your own product. Thank you so much.